Hi, I'm Jacqueline with Erie Tech. We're at Eaton's Power System Experience Center. Today, we're going to take a look at some of their most popular variable frequency drives. All right, let's take a look at one of Eaton's general purpose variable frequency drives. This is called our Power XL DG1. And with this demonstration, if you will see that we have a variable frequency drive next to a contactor with an overload, also known as a starter. So with that starter, all we can really do is turn that motor on, run it at 60 hertz, and that's about it. We don't have much control with it to be able to kind of change the speed or anything. So again, one of the features of a VFD. So the main thing we want to talk about right now, though, is the energy savings we're going to get using a VFD. So with this demonstration, we have a couple different tubes we can show what it's like with the blower motor and how much airflow we're going to be talking, we're going to be using between the, the uh, two different applications. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the starter. So if you hear it, it's actually going to slam on like that because it's actually going to jump right to 60 hertz right away as fast as it can. So you're going to get that six times in rush current from that motor. Also, if you look, we don't have any control over that, that airflow. The way we would have to do that is actually use a baffle or air handling system like this to be able to restrict the airflow on a water handling system, think of a valve to be able to control the flow of water. But we can go ahead and we can control it, what we need to do. And also, if we look at the screen, we can actually see how much power we are using. So right now, with it running wide open without the baffle, we're about 926, 930 kilowatts. I can go ahead and put the baffle on here, get the amount of flow that I want, and I'm really not saving that much power. So I'm almost still using about the same just from running at full speed. You kind of like to think about that, like driving in your car with your foot all the way down on the accelerator and using your brake to adjust the speed. It just doesn't make too much sense. Not very efficient though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the drive, the variable frequency drive. And if you notice, it's not gonna slam on right away. It's actually gonna slowly coast up. We have it set for 50% speed or 30 Hertz. So it's got that soft start capability within the drive as well. So you can slowly ramp it up and slowly ramp it down. So at 50% speed, you can see how much power we're using compared to across the line. If you actually compare the amount of airflow, if you look, look behind me and over here, I'm going to set this so that it's roughly the same. And now let's look at how much power we're using. We're using about 850 compared to about 250. So drastic difference between the two. And Something else to keep in mind is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to turn this one off because of the noise. So if we take a look at the other one, the variable frequency drive that is, it's actually going to, it's not staying steady. It's, it wasn't 250, it's actually, it's going to keep going down. So what's happening there is actually what's called the active energy control that we have inside of our drives. So that's a patented algorithm that's inside of here that's designed to specifically gain another 5 to 10% energy savings on top of the, just using the drive in general. So with that, it's going to keep going down and it's going to kind of fine tune that point. It's going to save as much power as we can with keeping that amount of power that we need. So, and it's going to do that. If we looked, it wasn't, it was a half speed, but it was a lot less than half the power because it's actually a cubic function. So it's a half times a half times a half. So lots of energy savings we're going to get with that drive. And then some of the other capabilities of the drives are going to be, if we look at this list, we actually have the safe torque off. And what that is, is if we have some kind of emergency situation, so think of conveyor, a conveyor belt, for example, if an emergency happens, it shuts down power, it loses power, it's going to no longer feed any torque to that motor. So that motor is just going to kind of come, it's going to coast to a stop. It's not just going to have an abrupt stop. So that's a good, a good thing compared to where you are in different types of processes. Another main thing is going to be the harmonics that are associated with these drives, that these drives create with the power electronics inside of them. We have DC link chokes or DC chokes on there on the DC bus. Again, that's going to limit the harmonics. It's also going to reduce the voltage loss. Another great option you can do with these drives that a lot of people don't realize is you can actually take single phase power in and convert three phase power out. Because again, if you think about it, all it doesn't really care what's going in. We're going AC to DC back to AC. So whatever we're producing with that DC bus on the output, it doesn't really matter what's on the input. So again, great for industrial applications or it could be agricultural applications, different areas where they might be able to use that, that kind of feature. And then with that, there's also many different types of communication protocols. So lots of different options there, lots of different I.O. options. So great features you can do with any of the uh, general purpose drives. And we also have some newer ones. We have one that's called a DM1. It's actually a micro drive. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at that at another location. So here we are at the DM1 drive. 
This is offered in four different sizes, up to 30 horsepower at 480 volts. It also offers all the features that we just talked about, including that active energy control. It's gonna offer a web server, IoT, and even Bluetooth connectivity. So lots of features built into this smaller form factor. We also offer a more basic version of this that is actually called just the DM1. It doesn't include the display, but again, it all depends on what's right for your application. To learn more about Eaton's VFDs or to discuss your application in depth, give us a call at Erie Tech.